world news tonight. Financial woes. India unveiled one of its biggest jumps in capital spending in the past decade. Workers unite. The United Kingdom was hit with the biggest strike action in more than a decade. Request for more. Ukraine pressures for more fighter jets despite the recent donations from the West. And it's the Lantern Gala. China prepares for the Lantern Festival this year with luminous creations. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and you're watching World News as we bring to you news from across the globe. Now, neighboring India is leading tonight on our broadcast as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government announced a major boost for infrastructure spending in its last full budget before the 2024 general election, aiming to provide a strong impetus for job creation and strengthen macroeconomic stability amid a global slowdown. India's government on Wednesday unveiled its budget for the coming year, and it features one of its biggest jumps in capital spending in the past decade, as the government tries to create jobs while maintaining financial discipline. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's party, which faces elections in key states this year and a national vote in 2024, has been under pressure to create jobs for the country of 1.4 billion people. Many have struggled to gain employment, despite it being one of the world's fastest-growing major economies. Nirmala Sitaraman is India's finance minister. After the subdued period of the pandemic, private investments are growing again. The budget takes the lead once again to ramp up the virtuous cycle of investment and job creation. Honourable Speaker, sir, the capital investment outlay is being increased steeply for the third year in a row by 33% to 10 lakh crores. That figure equates to around $122 billion. Sitaraman also announced total spending will rise 7.5% to around $550 billion in the next fiscal year starting on April 1st. And the government will target a budget deficit of 5.9% of GDP for 2023-24, down from 6.4% for the current year. Since taking over office in 2014, Modi's party has ramped up capital spending, while wooing investors through lower tax rates and labour reforms, and offering subsidies to poor households to clinch their political support. However, a lack of jobs for young people and meagre wages for people in work remains a problem. Modi remains projected to win the general election. Chairman Gautam Adani of India's Adani Group said in a video message that the group will review its capital raising plans once the market stabilizes after flagship Adani Enterprises withdrew a $2.5 billion share sale, citing the need to insulate investors from potential losses. Losses to Adani Group stocks hit $100 billion after the conglomerate's flagship company called off a $2.4 billion equity sale, saying it would not be morally correct given the current stock wipeout. Adani called off the share sale as a stock route sparked by US short seller Hindenburg's criticism deepened, despite the offer being fully subscribed. In the fallout of the short seller's attack, shares of Adani Group's flagship firm Adani Enterprises as well as other group companies stumbled. The shelving of the share sales marks an embarrassing turn of events for the billionaire who has forged partnerships with foreign players in his global expansion of businesses that stretch from ports of mining to cement. Adani has lost his title as Asia's richest man. He is now the world's 16th richest as per Forbes list, down from third rank last week. In the video address, Adani said the ports to airports conglomerate's cash flow has been very strong and that it has an impeccable track record of fulfilling debt obligations. He said the interest of investors was the chief consideration in their decision to withdraw the offer. Over in the United Kingdom, half a million people stopped work over pay in Britain, leaving transport networks paralysed and thousands of classrooms empty in the largest walkout in over a decade. As Europe battles a cost-of-living crisis, Britain's umbrella labour organisation, the Trade Union Congress, or the TUC, called it the biggest day of strike action since 2011. The latest round of stoppages come a day after more than 1.27 million took to the streets in France, increasing pressure on French government over pension reform plans. 
British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has been called for pay rises to be reasonable and affordable, warning that big pay hikes would jeopardize attempts to tame inflation. But unions have accused millionaire Sunak of being out of touch with the challenges faced by the ordinary working people struggling to make ends meet in the face of low paid insure work and spiraling costs. Teachers and train drivers were amongst the latest group to attack as well as the border force staff at UK air and sea ports. The NEU teaching union estimated 85% of schools in England and Wales had been hit by walkouts, adding that this indicated the level of anger in the profession. Rail passengers have also been warned to expect continued disruptions in their journeys in the aftermath of Wednesday's strike action and ahead of Friday's walkouts. Commuters have been warned by operators to expect significantly reduced train services across all three days and advised to check ahead of taking a journey. Australia's central bank said it will replace the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II from its $5 currency note with a new design to reflect the honour and the history of its indigenous culture. The Reserve Bank of Australia said in a statement that the decision following the consultation with the federal government which supports the change. The other side of the note will continue to feature the Australian Parliament. Australia in September 2022 said the image of King Charles would not automatically replace Queen Elizabeth on the $5 notes and that she might be replaced by Australian figures. Authorities have said the decision to include the Queen's image on the note was about her personality as opposed to her status as the monarch. The Reserve Bank said it would consult the indigenous groups in the designing of the new bank note. It will take a number of years to design and print the new bank note. Until then, the current note will be continued to be issued. Queen Elizabeth's death last year has reignited debates in Australia about its future as a constitutional monarchy. Voters narrowly chose to maintain the British monarch as its head of state in 1999 referendum. King Charles III, who became British monarch after his mother's death, is the head of state in Australia, New Zealand and 12 other Commonwealth realms outside the United Kingdom, although the role is largely ceremonial. A week after securing promises of tank support, Ukraine is now pressuring its Western allies to provide fighter jets. While the Allies have remained firm that fighter jets would not be a part of military support, the U.S. has announced plans to send medium-range rockets to Ukraine. During a trip to Paris, Ukraine Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov asked France for further support, asking for fighter jets that his country needs. According to Defense Chief, tactical aircrafts are a crucial part of any country's air defense system, and the same holds true for Ukraine. He remained optimistic that soon enough, countries will begin sending fighter jets to Ukraine to use in the fight against Russia, with Reznikov mentioning that the request for tank support, like the German-made Leopard 2, was initially rejected before later being approved. While talks between the defense chiefs of Ukraine and France ended without any conclusion on fighter jet support, Paris agreed it will send 12 additional Caesar howitzers and has discussed training Ukrainian pilots to fly French fighter jets as part of military assistance to Kyiv. France also agreed to provide radar capable of detecting enemy aircraft at a distance of 250 kilometers. Meanwhile, according to officials in Washington, the U.S. is preparing to offer Kyiv a 2.2 billion U.S. dollar military aid package, which is expected to include medium-range rockets. The U.S. Congress has approved more than $110 billion in aid since the war began last February. In addition, the European Union will increase the number of Ukrainian troops it aims to train to 30,000 as it looks to continue its support for Ukraine's fight against Russia. The latest figure is double the 15,000 troops the bloc had initially promised in November 2022. The plan will be announced officially at an UN-Ukraine summit in Kyiv on Friday as European allies continue to step up their military support for Ukraine. Going into a short commercial break now, more world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. The Israeli military said that they struck Gaza overnight, hours after it interrupted a rocket launch from Gaza and following appeals from the United States for all sides of calm, escalating violence in Israel and the occupied West Bank. 
There were no immediate reports of serious casualties. Video distributed by the Israeli army shows airstrikes targeted rockets and weapons production sites used by Hamas, the Islamist group that runs the blockade strip, in response to the previous rocket launch. Powerful explosions shook buildings and lit up the night sky over Gaza as warning sirens sounded again in Israeli areas around the strip warning of more incoming rocket fire before dawn. There were no claim of responsibility for Wednesday's rocket from Hamas for a smaller Iran-backed Islamic Jihad movement which fired rockets at Israel last week. The armed wing of the leftist Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine said it had launched rocket salvos at Israel earlier on its response to the airstrikes and the systematic aggression against the Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. The exchange of fire underlined the tensions between Israel and the Palestinians after a Palestinian gunman was shot dead seven people near the synagogue in East Jerusalem in an Israeli raid in a West Bank refugee camp killed at least 10 Palestinians. Israel had been carrying out nearly daily raids in the West Bank since a spate of deadly attacks by Palestinians in Israel last year, leading a bloody January for Palestinians in which 35 people, militants and civilians were killed. The race for the president is ramping up in the United States in the Republican Party, with Nikki Haley expected to announce her bid on the 15th of February, making the first official challenger to former President Donald Trump. Our job is not to make sure that Europeans are happy with us. Our job is to make sure we're keeping the American public safe. Nikki Haley, the former American ambassador to the United Nations, will seek the Republican nomination for president, squaring off against her former boss, Donald Trump, in the contest for the White House. A source familiar with her plans said Haley will announce her candidacy on February 15th. Haley, the daughter of Indian immigrants, drew national notice in 2015 when, as the governor of South Carolina, she signed into law a bill removing the Confederate battle flag from the statehouse after a white nationalist gunned down nine black worshippers inside a Charleston church. In 2017, newly elected President Donald Trump named Haley his envoy to the United Nations. You know, it's a thrill to be here at the UN. I will tell you that um, we have hit the ground running. A position she used to further Trump's America First message. This administration is prepared and ready to go in, um, to have me go in, look at the UN, and everything that's working, we're going to make it better. Everything that's not working, we're going to try and fix. And anything that is seems to be obsolete and not necessary, we're going to do away with. She's a fantastic person, very importantly, but she also is somebody that gets it. When she retired from the post at the end of 2018, Trump lavished her with praise. We hate to lose. Uh, you'll, hopefully you'll be coming back at some point, but <laughs> you want to just, uh, in maybe a different capacity. You can have your pick. But the role she's picked is one that now pits her against Trump, who has announced plans to make a third run for the White House. Haley had long been floated as a potential Republican presidential candidate. She was even asked about her plans for 2024 back in 2019. It would be a waste of energy for me to think about 24 at this point. Instead, what I want to do is just do everything I'm doing really well now and just see if doors open. And then we'll find out. Maybe a door will open. <laughs> If she were to win the nomination, Haley would be the first woman at the top of the Republican presidential ticket in history, as well as the party's first non-white nominee. The FBI has searched President Biden's beach home, which is the latest on the hunt for classified documents. However, no documents were found. On the other hand, President Joe Biden also met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy for the first in-person meeting since the Republican won the gavel. There were no agreements on the debt ceiling, but McCarthy said the meeting went well and he thinks the two can find common ground. FBI agents today spending nearly four hours combing through President Biden's Delaware beach home, their latest search for mishandled classified documents. The president's lawyer later saying no documents with classified markings were found, that the search was done with the president's full support and cooperation, and that the agents took some materials and handwritten notes for review. It comes after the revelation the FBI searched Mr. Biden's former private office back in November, but the White House did not share that with the public. The president today ignoring shouted questions. Mr. President, are you confident today was the final search for classified documents? 
Tonight, President Biden's aides argue, unlike former President Trump, they handed back all classified documents immediately. But the White House won't say why they did not tell the public about the FBI's November search and whether others have not been revealed. Has the FBI conducted any searches of any other locations associated with the president that you or the White House is aware of? Look, I think we're providing information as this goes on and answering questions about the, the search activities as they've been happening. There have now been three known FBI searches at locations connected to the president. His former office, where Biden lawyers first discovered classified documents. His Wilmington home, where the FBI found more classified material after Biden lawyers made their own discovery and today's search at the Rehoboth Beach House. Republicans are blasting a lack of transparency. The special counsel investigation looming over the White House comes as the president met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy with a showdown building over raising the debt limit. The White House is demanding McCarthy unveil a budget proposal. Republicans are calling for spending cuts. We both laid out some of our vision of where we'd want to get to, and I believe after laying both of out, I can see where we can find common ground. In France now, the 2023 immigration bill will open the debate on a highly inflammatory subject. The legislation is likely to come up against the uncompromising position of France's right-wing parties. In what the French government calls a balance between toughening controlled immigration whilst improving integration, a new draft bill would introduce a series of measures to streamline the immigration system. According to French deportation statistics, France receives 120,000 immigrant removal orders per year. But due to lengthy appeals processes, only deports 10 percent of them, which has drawn criticism from the far right. France's interior minister has said the bill would fast-track the process and crack down on people told to leave. Any foreigner in France applying for long-term residency will also have to prove they've mastered a minimum level of French the first time any formal language tests have been required for residency. The proposal also includes measures for undocumented migrants working in sectors under pressure, like restaurant workers, hotels and construction. If they've lived in France for a minimum of three years and work in an industry experiencing a labour shortage, they can apply for legal worker status. In addition, to address a shortage in French hospitals, qualified foreign healthcare workers would be eligible for a special residency card and be able to bring their families with them. It's expected the legislation will be presented to the National Assembly before the summer. One of the most tragic events in history of space exploration is the loss of the space shuttle Columbia and all seven of her crew in 2003. The tragedy made worse because it didn't have to happen. NASA continues their space exploration with remembrance of the seven astronauts 20 years later. The fate of space shuttle Columbia was sealed as soon as it took off. A piece of insulation foam broke loose, damaging the orbiter's heat shield during the launch. And 16 days later, the shuttle disintegrated upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven astronauts on board. It happened 17 years after the loss of Challenger in 1986, bringing the total losses to 14 people. In 2010, the space shuttle, after nearly 30 years of duty, will be retired from service. For safety reasons, it was decided the space shuttle program would be suspended and for NASA to return to space capsules. It allowed the construction of the International Space Station, which is what it was made for, so it achieved its purpose. But the Americans realized they had to find a solution that didn't endanger the lives of the astronauts. And launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Has the other change was within the industry. To lower launch costs and ensure service to the ISS, NASA turned to the private sector and SpaceX was the winner. The SpaceX launch tonight marks the official start of commercial resupply missions by American companies operating out of U.S. spaceports. NASA launched the crew transportation program, the commercial crew program, and decided to subcontract it. It puts various players in competition, including SpaceX and Boeing. There are two American providers who share the service of the space station for the astronauts, and SpaceX has a large lead. Both the retirement of the space shuttle and NASA's collaboration with private companies for low-cost space launches continue to make headlines today. As the Orion capsule is expected to clear the way for a possible astronaut lunar landing in 2025.
welcome back and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. Air quality in Bangkok exceeded the safety threshold and reached an unhealthy level today due to stagnant weather conditions. Concerned residents were seen wearing face masks on the streets. Boeing bid farewell to the iconic 747 sending the final plane for client Atlas Air into the skies. It marked the end of an era when the first ever jumbo jet ruled the skies with a jumbo jet known as the Queen of the Skies. The Philippines has granted the United States expanded access to its military bases after the United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin arrived in Manila for talks. Widespread cases of dengue fever in Bolivia's Santa Cruz region had authorities on high alert to contain the outbreak as the disease has started to overrun the country's healthcare infrastructure. Samsung Electronics unveils its latest premium smartphones with a focus on their powerful cameras in a test of its grand power as the market for mobiles undergoes unprecedented contraction. that's all the news we got for you tonight join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe and in case you missed to watch any of the stories we add tonight you can always re-watch by catching us on our youtube channel youtube.com slash other there in english now just as the spring festival ended the chinese are prepping for the lantern festival gala we leave you tonight with the flamboyant visuals of what to be expected in the coming festival thank you for watching stay safe and have a good night